Hi, this is Murph. In this video, I will show you how to create a iSCSI uh, target on a uh, FreeNAS 8.3 uh, server that I have running on a VM on my KVM server on Ubuntu 12.04. So I have this KVM server running on this local host. Uh, so here is the FreeNAS uh, VM that I have here, uh, and here is the VM console. Uh, so I'm just going to log into the FreeNAS server first uh, to uh, to connect uh, to this uh, iSCSI, uh, to, to set up iSCSI. So here is my FreeNAS. Uh, I logged into my FreeNAS uh, server IP. Okay, so first we're gonna go to um, under. So I'm gonna close all of this. I'm just gonna go under services. There is a thing called iSCSI. Okay, so this iSCSI option here, so you go to um, device extents first, and you click on add device extents. Right now in this VM, uh, it has uh, three disks attached. If I go to uh, the storage and volume manager, I can see there are like three disks. So I'm going to create iSCSI LANs based on these two two disk idea one and idea two so just gonna go add device extent and I say LAN one so LAN stand for logical unit number but you can name it anything but I like to call it them LANs uh, so hit OK okay so I created the device extent now so with uh, um, FreeNAS there are options to both create iSCSI on based on device like as a raw disk or you can also have a file extents. I prefer the device extents because the performance is better uh, and less issues uh, with the file based uh, um, device ex uh, extents the, the performance will be a little bit sore because it has to write the file uh, on its existing file system versus this uh, raw on. So that's what I prefer. So that's what I'm going to cover right now. So I'm going to add one more uh, device extent here which is my LAN2 Okay, so now I have both of my. Uh, so we go here. I can see both of these lands. Okay, the next step is to create initiator. So I'm gonna add initiator right now. This basically uh, you can restrict access to a specific server if you have initiator ID uh, on Windows or on, on VMware ESX server. Say you're you know, uh, creating this. Uh, iSCSI uh, storage for VMware ESX server, uh, then you could get the iSCSI initiator ID from the server and put it in, uh, and that way it'll only restrict access to this iSCSI uh, storage for the specific initiator you specify. So in this case, I'm going to open up to all uh, on my network since I have a home network. If I had any specific network that I want to specify, I could also do that. So I could say here right now 192.168.1.0/24. So that's my uh, home network. So I'm just gonna restrict to that. I'm gonna hit OK. Guess I have my initiator created. Now I'm gonna go to portals and I'm gonna add a portal. Okay. So this portal is like a target. Uh, so I'm gonna say my iSCSI. And I'm gonna keep it 000, zero recent all of the IP address that I have. So I have only one interface, so it's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna keep it default, 3 to 60. Okay, my portal is created. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to targets. I'm gonna create the iSCSI target now based on all the settings. So I'm gonna say iSCSI TGT, you can name it anything. The alias is not required. I'm going to copy and paste the same thing. Right through is fine. Portal is the one which we just created, and the initiator is one. So if I have multiple, uh, you know, LANs on this machine, disk in this machine, and if I have, I want to have separate uh, access for different servers, then I would have separate iSCSI targets, and each of those targets will point to a specific portal, as well as the uh, initiator, so that you know. You can manage the access. So in this case, 
uh, I have only one. I'm going to keep everything default, authentic machine automatic. Uh, you can uh, change this to chap uh, for more security, but for me, I think for test machine, it's okay. Um, so I'm going to hit OK. Everything else, you can keep it as default. Okay, so my portal is created. So target is created. Now I'm going to map this target to specific. Uh, I'm going to say which uh, device extends will be part of this target. So this is the part where you, if you have multiple targets, you can, you know, once you create targets, then you come to this section, you should be able to map those uh, device extends uh, uh, to their specific targets. In this case, only one, so I'm going to say iSCSI target and LAN1. This is the first LAN. And I'm going to do one more. LAN2. Okay, so now I have my uh, everything is created uh, for my iSCSI here. So now I have to make sure the service is started. So to make sure the iSCSI service is started, you go to Control Services under the Sales Services menu, and then you go to iSCSI and you press on. Sometimes you might have to reboot the system, uh, but it looks like it did just did the job, so it's on now. So now this iSCSI service is functional. Um, so um, uh, now we can use this iSCSI storage for, for our servers. Um, so here's my Windows server here. And in Windows, it's a Windows 2012 server. Let me go to control panel. Sorry. I changed everything in Windows 2012. Control panel. And iSCSI. Here you go. I'm going to click on iSCSI initiator. Okay, it's the first time. This is the first time I'm trying iSCSI on this machine on this Windows 2012. I'm going to say so the Microsoft iSCSI service is not running. The service is required to start it. We're going to say yes. So the iSCSI service is now started. Okay, so now I got the iSCSI uh, initiator information here. I might have to open firewall ports because by default this port is not open. So I'm just gonna um, go to here. If you have disabled firewall, that's when you know you can connect right away. But in this case, it's uh, Windows 2012, so they try to be. Uh, and most of the Windows uh, operating system they enable firewall by default, which is not bad. Uh, I'm going to close this window for now. I'm going to come back to here. Uh, sorry. Let's see. Windows Firewall. Okay. Let's try this first, and if it doesn't work, then we'll just turn on the firewall. We can play with it. You can play with it if you want, but. I'm going to say a new rule. So, port. Let's see if I iSCSI service here. Let's try that. So, the predefined service iSCSI. Select this. Guess there. I'm going to also create an outbound rule. Uh, predefined iSCSI. Okay, so should be able to see now. So I'm gonna ask the initiator again. And the first thing I'm gonna do is basically give my target IP, which is this free uh, freelance server 179. Okay, so it found it. Okay, login succeeded. I'm gonna click done. Okay, so it's there, and then I hit okay, let's see, okay, should be able to uh, now go to computer management.
Okay, so here you see I see both of these disks now. Now I can just create a volume. First, make them online. Online. Initialize disk. And then I'm going to say OK. Both of those disks initialized. I'm going to convert to dynamic disk. Uh, these two disks. That gives more flexibility. So now I can uh, basically create a span volume, for example. Uh, actually striped okay sure quick format is fine Okay, now we should see that volume here. Still doing its job. We should be able to see the system performance here. Okay. So now it's done, most likely, so I'm just going to go back to refresh. Hmm. It still doesn't uh, show up. It takes some time. Okay, here you go. Okay, so here now I have this volume created. It's basically using iSCSI as a raw disk. So that's the benefit of iSCSI. Um, um, thank you for watching. Uh, post any comment if you have any. Uh, if you have any question, um, you have a great day.